Hi, I am Hyun Jeon, a second year PhD student from Seoul National University. Today, I present our paper, Classes are not clusters, improving label-based evaluation of dimensionality reduction, which is a collaborative effort between Seoul National University, UC Davis, and Hamad bin Khalifa University. The co-authors are Yun Zin Kuo, Michael Apti, Kwan Liu Ma, and Jin Uk -so. Before we dive in, let me pose a question. Are classes necessarily clusters, specifically when looking at the MNIST dataset of handwritten digits or the fashion MNIST of fashion items, does each digit or fashion category form a distinct, well-separated cluster? The truth is, we can't say for certain. Consider a high-dimensional dataset like MNIST in this slide. Subclass labels are really well-separated, indicating that they might form distinct clusters in the data space. But as this figure shows, other classes aren't as distinct and even overlap. Hence, claiming that these classes are real clusters in the original data space is problematic. However, researchers often assume that classes are clusters, even when the validity of these assumptions remain uncertain. Here, our study especially focuses on the problem of using such an assumption in evaluating the reliability of dimensionality reduction embeddings. So let's deep dive into the problem. To understand the problem situation we proposed, let's first understand dimensional reduction. Dimensional reduction algorithms are, as their name suggests, the techniques that reduce the dimensionality of input high dimension data by preserving its structural characteristics. Recently, techniques like TISNI and NewMap have emerged as leaders in this space, substantially aiding visual analytics. The objective of dimensional reduction is simple. Distant points in the original data should remain distant in the reduced space, and points close to each other in the original data should also stay close in the embedding. In this way, dimension reduction produces a 2D representation that captures the essence of the original high-dimensional dataset. This visual representation, often floated as a scatterplot, allows data analysis to quickly examine data patterns. However, during this transformation from high to low dimensions, distortions inherently occur. In other words, the cluster structure in dimensional reduction may be inaccurate. For example, a recent work categorized the distortions in dimensional reduction into two types, missing groups and first groups. While missing groups represent clusters from the original data that split in the reduced space, first groups depict originally separated clusters that have merged during the reduction. This visualization demonstrates that both missing and first group distortions commonly happen. The circuit area, for, for instance, showcases first group distortions, implying the points within the circles are denser than in reality. Given, this given these distortions, numerous metrics to evaluate the accuracy of dimensional reduction have been proposed. Among them, we will now especially spotlight the metrics which utilize ground truth clusters to gouge the reliability of such reductions. These metrics measure how accurately the ground truth clusters are separated in the reduced space. Metrics like silhouette or DSC are popular choices. Higher silhouette scores, indicative of better clustering of ground truth clusters, imply a better reduction. But how do we define these ground truth clusters? Typically, class labels are treated as ground truth clusters, operating on the assumption that these labels represent distinct clusters in the original high-dimensional data. However, as we discussed earlier, we do not know whether class labels are clusters or not. This means that we, not, we do not know whether the assumption on where cluster labels is true or not, casting doubt on the reliability of ground truth cluster-based or label-based evaluation methods for dimensionality reduction. We thus wanted to revise the current metrics of using class labels for dimension to reduction evaluation, which assumes the classes to be ground truth clusters. Instead of assuming that classes are well clustered and checking the separation between classes, our new metrics focus on evaluating the extent to which class labels clustered in the original space are well depicted by the embedding. In other words, we phrase the embedding that accurately depicts the separation and overlap of classes in the original space. Skipping over mathematical details, our method's core concept is straightforward. Let's first look at the current way of evaluating dimension reduction using class labels. This is done by simply examining the degree of clustering in the embedded space. 
In our improved metrics, we do such an examination not only in low dimension embedding, but also in high dimensional space. Then we quantify the difference between the way of clustering in two spaces, yielding finite distortion scores. So it is simple. We check the degree of clustering in both the original and embedded spaces and compare them. We've termed our metrics as labeled trustworthiness and continuity, following the famous metrics, trustworthiness and continuity. We propose a pair of metrics recognizing two types of distortions, missing and false groups. Now, let's briefly see how effective and accurate our metrics are. We conducted several experiments in our paper, but I just want to demonstrate a single example. In this example, we made a synthetic high-dimensional dataset comprising six hyperboles. Ideally, the best representation would consist of six distinct particles, each corresponding to a hyperbole. We first made such an optimal embedding. Then, we artificially generated distortions by overlapping these circles. Note that we do so in two ways. We first overlap the circles in pair, and also overlap all of them together. It's evident that the latter is more distorted than former. Then we apply our metrics, label trustworthiness and continuity and competitor metrics to the embeddings. We wanted to check whether they could capture the differences in distortions. As a result, our metrics, label trustworthiness and continuity, clearly reflect the increased distortions in the latter scenario. Meanwhile, previous metrics failed to do so, underscoring our metrics accuracy. Of course, label trustworthiness and continuity are also scalable. The scalability of our metrics highly depends on the scalability of the way we use to quantify the degree of clustering. Overall, it shows at least competitive scalability to the previous measures. One good news is that you can access labor trustworthiness and continuity on GitHub. Just search for LTNC. Additionally, they are available through Jadu, a Python library offering diverse dimensionality reduction evaluation metrics. Note that Jadu will be also presented in this year's BIS. Do not miss out the presentation. In conclusion, our work challenges a famous assumption on dimension reduction evaluation and introduces an improved, more accurate approach for the evaluation. For a deeper dive, please refer to our paper and check our project page, GitHub, and my personal website. Thank you for your attention.